Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video on ethical hacking theories. And in this video, we are going to learn about active reconnaissance or active information gathering. In previous video, we'll learn technical information gathering using passive techniques. But if you haven't checked that video, please do so to get the better understanding. All right, so what we're going to do in this video, we are going to take IPs into consideration and we will find open ports and services running on this host. So uh, this is an active reconnaissance, means uh, we will need to have permissions from the parties, means there should be some official documentation to perform this kind of activity. But I'll be using my own labs, so that would just be considered as, as a practice. Now, you may be asking, why do we collect this information, right? So we need this information. So when I say this information, we need this technical information so that we can plan and design our attacks. For example, if we find um, during our active reconnaissance, okay, you know, the customer or the client is using this service, then we can collect the service and we can later on find the vulnerabilities and that service so that we can design our exploits to target the host. And we gather information about the port so that we can, uh, you know, put that information in our final report to let our client know that, okay, you know, we found out these abnormal ports that are open and you want to make sure that these are closed so that their security posture can be improved. For example, uh, you know, port 21, if this is open to the public, this is not a best security practice. Uh, I would not recommend opening that to the public. So what we would do is we would recommend to the client so that they can improve this in their environment. And I want to give one bonus tip in this video. At the end of the video, I will show you how you can detect on your target that, you know, someone is trying to scan you or someone is trying to get access to your system without letting you know so stick around now in this video i am going to use nmap and this is the most common used in the industry is used to enumerate hosts application server and much more this can have a lot of capabilities that we can perform and i would say that i use it for for the most part now jump to our demo so on this screen, this is my Kali Linux environment and I, I created a video how you can create your own environment. So if you haven't checked that, so please do so. I'll, I'll share the link as well in this video. Let's jump to our terminal. So click on this. So if you notice right here, it says that Kali at Kali means user is a Kali and the host name is Kali. In our previous video, if you notice that I had root at Kali. So a root means there was an administration account and over here we have a Kali. So you want to switch to root user, you can do sudo su and then press enter. It's going to ask you a password for Kali. So uh, let me enter my password and it's going to switch me to uh, root user and I can do sudo to home. And you know, you can either use root or Kali, but the, for the most part, we try to use Kali and the least privileged user so that we won't mess around with the, the host or our target. So let me exit and go back to my previous user. So Nmap, um, let's first check that even if we have that installed in Kali. As Kali is up, operating system where we have all the tools pre-installed but let's just make sure so nmap hyphen h nmap hyphen h means it's going to uh, give us the help page of this tool so over here if we find this first line let me check the first line if you see over here the first line nmap 7.93 https 7.93 is the version of nmap so means this tool is installed on this and it's going to show us all the options right here that we can perform with this nmap. The syntax of this tool is uh, nmap and then we're going to have any options that we want to put into or we can say flag and then our target. In this syntax we have nmap this is a tool uh, to initiate the command and then options like any flag for example if we want to run this for our ports host or any kind of flags we can put and the target of for example we have one uh ip that we got from our client the, uh, this ip is my uh web server ip that i created for for this lab that ip is 192.168.4 and 100 and now you see 
I am directly interacting with the host. I mean, this is the IP of that server where I have my web application running. Let's press enter and wait for it. You see, it says that starting and map 7.93 at this time. So it shows me a time as well. So if you look at the output, let's, let's see what it says. So in the first line, it tells us, okay, you know, this is the version of IP and this is the time that we started our, uh, you know, scanning. And it says that it scanned for this target and host is up means the target server is up. Now it says that scan thousand ports and out of those thousand ports, 998 ports were filtered out means these ports are not open. And then it found out that two ports are open. I know uh, port 22 is SSH port that is open and port 80 is for our HTTP server. Then it says that nmap done, one IP address, of course, one IP, it shows us right here, one host is up and the scan in 6.19 seconds. I mean, it took almost 6.19 seconds to perform this activity. You should keep record of everything. So you wanna document this thing because we are going to need this thing later on when we're going to scan our vulnerabilities. Now let's jump to our next. If we want to scan just specific IP, what we can do is nmap-p flag for that port that we want to scan. So for example, if I want to scan port 80 and then our target host before my target host, I use that option or I would say a flag, hyphen P means port 80. It is the HTTP port, non-secure port, and my target host. So what I did, he just ran the command on the port and it came back, okay, on port 80, they have this service and the port 80 is open. Next thing, what if I want to run more than one port, right? I can use comma after ports and we can run for example 22 or 100 or any sort of port that we want to check so let's let's say 443 check this so what we did we had a port 80 20 20 uh 2200 and 443 so it says that 422 open okay 80 port open and it says that 104 tcp port filtered new account acct Filtered means either our fire, firewall rejected the connection or this is not open. And 443 is the same thing. Our firewall rejected this connection. Now, I want to check the port on this host that could be between 1 to 20. So I would just use dash between the numbers like starting point and ending point and then we'll run. It ran one by one on each port and scan all of the things and it says that nothing is open over there. Now, let's suppose if you want to scan more than one host, what I would do is the same thing like 100, then I would use dash or hyphen and then last octet would be 100 to 110. So what it's going to do, it's going to go ahead and start scanning. So you see right here, it shows that it found out only one IP that was up and that IP had these two ports open. Let's suppose if I want to scan using wildcard, what I can do, I, I can use a wildcard in any of the octet and I scan that way as well. It's going to go ahead and it's going to scan all the IPs which can be possible in the three octets. So if you notice right here, it says that nmap done 256 IP addresses, means 256 combination of this kind of IPs with when we use our wildcard. Now, for example, I want to scan my entire network. I wanna see if the port 22 is open on the entire network or not. So I can do is 168, 14, under and then I can use this as well. Like for example, for this IP, it would be like 30 some mask. So let's run this command. So what it's going to do, it's going to go ahead and scan on entire network with sl uh, slash 30 and it's going to give us results right here. So again, it shows me that, okay, you are just single one IP and that is open for 2022. Now let's suppose if I want to use our host name instead of IP nmap can me nmap.org. Now you can say that, okay, you know, we are going to scan a host name which, which doesn't belong to us, right? Scan me dot nmap dot org is provided by nmap organization and we can use to test our commands right and this is allowed let me show you if we go to their website this is what i was going to target scan me dot nmap dot org 
this is the website that they provided to the customer so that they can you know run their command and this is officially allowed by nmap so let's suppose if i want to run on this host and i want to find the vulnerabilities or open ports and services running so you are in the command on scanme.org and this is the ip in case if we just you know use host name instead of ip it's going to bring us ip as well this is the ip it shows that 996 ports for filter and four of them are open on this host now we want to have some sort of a list of the ips so let's first create a list so let's say that uh echo this is going to be my ip 168 400 and i'm going to output through that uh, list.txt so what i'm trying to do I'm, I'm trying to add my ip to this list let me do a list this right here list.txt so now i'm going to use this list we can use nmap hyphen uh, lowercase i uppercase l all right so if you see we can use um, a list as well to enumerate our targets means we can have any number of ips in the list and we can just reference that list now uh there can be some scripts that we can use in in this if we want to use some sort of true run on our targets or scan our targets how we can do that so there are some default scripts that so where are those scripts scripts let's go to user share and map and scripts directory so let's do ls hyphen la so right now i am under this directory usr share and map and scripts and we can find all of those scripts what i'm going to do i'm going to use one script over fetch the data from my website that i have in my lab and map hyphen hyphen script I want to use http dash title. I want to pull the title of my website. P for my website is this. If you see output starting is the same thing and map scan for this. This is a time again 990 ports are filtered, two are up. And if you see that over here at port 80, which is http port, this is a web server port and http title of my website is welcome to SF Media. So this is a welcome page of my website. This is what I wanted from this script. So, all right, now let's jump to the bonus part. So for example, if you are running scan from Kali to our target, you might be thinking that how this target would, would know that oh, this Kali Linux machine is running scan the host on our target machine. So what I'm going to do is I am going to jump to my target server as well. And we're going to see, okay. So I split in my screen on, on the upper side, I have my Kali and on, on the bottom side, you have my Kali. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to SSH to my target server first just to see what's going on 168 for uh, 400 so ssh is a protocol that we use to to jump from one server to another server so what is the password for that server all right on the bottom screen i have my ss media server where i am a website and that was our target in our all enumeration and this is our Kali on the top screen. Uh, what you need to do, you need to run this command tail hyphen f and then var log and you need to use is cure. Just, just look at the last line. So it says that August 1031 assess media and Unix and ID open for user root. I mean, we just logged into this or this is what it's telling. So now you need to, you need to focus on this line. What I'm going to do, I'm going to run my scan and it's going to show over here. So from our source to our target, I run on port 22 and I want to run on my host 168400 and let's run. Okay. Did you notice one thing right here it says that on August 22, Seth Media SSHD did not receive identification string from 192.168.424. So this is the IP of my Kali server and they use this port 569274. Did not receive identification string means there was no authentication happen between these two targets and there was no official session between these two. So this is not a official session and this is not official log and it's going to uh, provide us a clue that you know something wrong is happening here whatever we do over here it's going to log that on our target service as well we can have our ids in in two form like we can use 
these logs detect or we can use our firewall logs because this is jumping between these two server via firewall if i close this port on firewall it's not going to let Kali to you know just uh jump around so we can collect logs either from our firewall or from our host itself and we can just moni put our monitoring on these and this is how we monitor in real world i hope you like this video if you have any questions please do let me know down there in the comments and i'll try to clarify those questions again thanks for watching have a good day